Come here. Come on then. How do? We're back vlogging. So yesterday's video I put up strange ways and whistle blowing. Thanks for all the kind comments, positivity, both on the channel and social media. So what we're going to talk about today? Well, this this is uh, it's not planned. It's to do with uh, it's to do with last night really. So kind of beer. Glass of wine, not drunk, went to bed at 12ish, fell asleep, I have no trouble falling asleep, it's staying asleep, half one I'm awake, what's on my mind, Mac, Mac, who's Mac, before I start this story, I told you already, this channel wanted to be educational, yeah, so in order for you guys to understand, the role of a prison officer, not every officer, they're all different, you know, a thousand prison officers, they'll all have a different career path, you know, some at the pointy end, segregations and that might see stuff no one should have to see, other people, very quiet, eat your butties, bit of paperwork, away you go, either's fine, not being critical of either, just pointing that out, so, on educational front, in order to understand a job, you need to understand some of the people, me personally, that, that I knew, how they were, how they behaved, how I interacted with them people. Yeah, so Mac, Mac was a personality disorder. He had a personality disorder. Dangerous personality disorders. These various disorders knocking about, antisocial, personality disorder well you can imagine yourself antisocial what do you think that means so Mac I don't know why we're thinking about this guy weren't one of them dreams guys he's just there in my mind thinking about him over and over and over all the interactions with him how I got to know him and it eventually led me to the the block, the segregation unit at, straight, at uh, Forest Bank, sorry. And some of the characters I met down there. So, Mac, when did I first become aware of him? I worked on B-Wing at Forest Bank when I first started. The first 18 months. When I started, it was a young offenders wing, 18 to 21. At some point during them 18 months, prison service headquarters or whoever was in charge of the North West decided that excuse me they didn't need as many young offender places in prison so B wing had two wings B1 and B2 two landings on each so the prison service decided Still beautiful up here, guys. Just going to give you a quick look. And you, dude. So, the prison d service decided that Forest Bank should have some more spaces for adults. Beautiful. So, B2 was going to become adult. We shipped out young offenders cleared the wing now working on B1 got a load of lads painters and our cleaners and we went upstairs once the wing was empty and it was painted top to bottom cleaned completely kitted out as a wing new mattresses in every cell new bedding packs stores were full of cleaning stuff towels a lot so basically you could bring 86 prisoners on there and away you go took us two weeks to do that the final weekend stevie steve stevie come on he's a bugger in with them trees come on 
Come on. The final weekend I was off. The plan was Wednesday, we were going to start, or we weren't, but prisoners would start arriving at Forest Bank to go on B2, adult prisoners. Monday morning, I was upstairs with me, uh, with me cleaners to B2, empty. Not a mattress, not a towel, nothing in the cleaning cupboards, not one thing on that wing. Rifled. The other wings over the weekend took everything. 86 mattresses gone the lot. Governor, at that time, Mike Goodwin <laughs> blew his stack. Needless to say, by the end of Monday, everything was back on the wing, almost. The plan was to fill that wing over a month. 10 at a time, come into the prison, settle down. Let the staff settle down. See, so staff have been working with young offenders. Young offenders and adults. You know, it's like working, like working with primary school kids and kids of leaving age, massive difference. The wing was full in a week. As I've already explained, when you have spaces, in your jail, 86 of them. We didn't get the prison service finest, let me tell you. We got them from segregation units, dispersal prisons. Now a dispersal prison, long-term prison, the difference going from there to a Cat B local like Forest Bank, would be like going from a penthouse, which everyone can understand, you can see that, to a bed sit, yeah? very very different them prisoners were not happy you know one or two we got from franklin very very they, they were going to be very very disruptive one in particular one lifer nearly caused a couple of riots on that wing but that's not what the story's about so mac had him as a cleaner for a while so when we opened up new wing new prisoners needed some cleaners picked him as a cleaner good lad think he had laundry for a bit after a short period of time uh, he came to me he said he, he didn't feel he could do the job I, d I don't know why um, it will become clear later so he sacked that job off couldn't understand at the time anyway a couple of weeks later again this is on reflection and looking back opened up in the morning about 10 15 minutes later prisoner comes to me mr samworth think you better look in cell whatever the wings at forest bank two landings on each wing yeah ones and twos the twos stairway either side that you go up to so i went up to the twos i can't remember what cell it was went in the cell there's a guy on the bed out cold he's got a dint in his head i've seen some injuries me rugby stuff like that this this was a, a perfectly perfectly round dint Imagine hitting someone with a pool ball in a sock, hard. Probably going to fracture the skull, but this left a dint. I don't know that it was a pool ball, I am surmising. Come on, Stevie. Ambulance, away he went. About a month later, Maka slashed someone on B2. We know we did it, it was on camera. I weren't on shift. Some incident around the pool table. He's seen going in his cell, he comes back, and at side, boom. Slash someone across the face. Alarm bells, kicked off. He's taken to the block. 
That's Maka on B2. I would later find out that he had assaulted this guy on the tools. Billy dint in me head because he was bullying him. I don't know what form that bullying took. So he'd assaulted someone really badly who ended up in hospital and then he striped someone. Well, not striped him, it was a single blade. If I say striped in prison, that's American prisons, Australian, any part of the world, quite often they make a double bladed weapon. Toothbrush, two razor blades melted in it. The reason they do that, if you cut someone's face so it's a double cut close together, it's really hard to heal. It can't be stitched and it is going to leave a scar. Yeah? So he wasn't striped, it was a single blade, a single cut. Come on, Stevie. Like I say, young offenders hard work. B2 was hard work because of the clientele we got from other prisons. I needed a move. It had been underway. I'd put him for a transfer to the segregation unit. So I ends up down the segregation unit. I'll give a good description of the segregation unit later at any prison. What the segregation's about, this is for people to understand. If you're in America, Block, Chokey, Solitary, many, many names. Segregations now, the prison service calls them CSUs, Care and Separation Units. Well, you know what? You can call them whatever you want. You can call them rainbow stables, call them crushers, all manner of things. You know, you can paint some all wonderful colours. It's still a punishment block, always will be, whatever you call it. And there will be some stigma there. And you will inevitably end up with bad people down there on punishment. It is a punishment block. It's very restricted. Unicorn, why did I come up with unicorn stable? I don't know, the point is, it's a block, it's a solitary, it's whatever. Prisons all over the world have these. Yeah, so I ended up down there, the segregation unit. And Mac is down there, so I already know him. Dynamic security, staff prisoner relationships. So I get on with this lad. Why do I get on with him? Same as I got on with everybody, yeah? I were transparent me, not literally. What you see is what you get, yeah? If you needed help with something, I'd help you. And other things. So, bear in mind, this is what I'm thinking last night, all night. So I get to thinking, B2, about prison officer. I tried to explain before, prisoners watch you 24 seven, so, It's akin to being on a stage. What do I mean by that? Imagine going to the theatre. Yeah? There's a stage with lights. There's somebody on there. Acting, if you like. You can see their behaviour, you can see everything. There's no getting away from it. In prison, you are on a stage, particularly in the private sector. You know, on them wings, eight, six prisoners, two staff, on the landing, people are watching me all day, I'm on stage. You can't blag them. They know what you like, they see how you, oh, you've got to look at this knob. What are you doing? Eh? <laughs> Come on. Come on. You're on stage, you can't blag them. They see you interacting with people, they see how you react to people. They see you being arsy with people, see you being nice, kind. They might see you as someone who might bring a phone in or some drugs. You know, see your kindness, um, how you interact with people as a weakness. Not me, not ever. So, Maka, he knows me, see me, on stage on B2. No makeup, incidentally, when I was on stage on B2.
So his behaviour has not been good down the block. He is a dangerous lad, that's quite clear. He's assaulted two people badly, one that we knew about. I later found out about the other one, he told me, that's what they do. You can't act on that, you know, it's like hearsay, could have been making it up. But when they get to trust you, you tell you things. So let me explain a little bit about the segregation unit in order for you to understand the incident I'm now going to talk about. Segregation units, solitary, rainbow stables, rainbow stables, <laughs> you know, whatever you want to call them, unicorn sheds, bad people, very strict regime. At Forest Bank in the morning, we used to go to every prisoner's cell and they had to apply for whatever they might want that day that was available. What do I mean by that? If they wanted a shower, they had to put in an application. If they wanted a phone call, they had to put in an application. Usually with a time. Sometimes you couldn't facilitate. If they wanted an exercise, they had to put in an application. So you get the idea, everyone's cell. We had a clipboard, so it'd be Macca. Phone call, 4 p.m. Exercise, yes please. Shower, yes please. Then you would start in a segregation, one cell at a time, doing clean outs. So you'd have a mop bucket, some cleaning products, you'd open a cell, there'd be two staff. If they run an unlock protocol, which means you needed more staff, that would be specified. Three staff and a senior officer, then you'd have three and a senior officer for certain individuals. You'd usually leave them to the end. Get the others done. So you'd go, do, you'd go round, everyone would clean the cell. You might do some exercise as well. It depends. Dinner time in the segregation unit. When there's always strange ways, the prisoners used to be let out one at a time to go and collect the meal. At Forest Bank, we had a little trolley. We'd put three meals on it, go to three cells, serve the meal at the door, return to the server, get another three meals. If I was on shift, I always liked to serve the meal to the prisoner. So there'd be two other staff. One would push the trolley, one would open the door. If I was on shift, I would pass the meal to the prisoner. I didn't do that because pushing the trolley was below me or opening the door. I was aware of what we got down there. The unlocked prisoners would have to go to the back of the cell. If they were particularly dangerous, we might ask them to face the wall away from me and kneel down while I put the meal in the cell. I'd place the meal on the floor with the water. So you might think it's not very hygienic treating people like animals. Believe me when I tell you, some of these people, if they wanted to hurt you, would be up whilst you were putting that meal down and they would attack you, they would assault you. There were some dangerous people down there. So all these people are going about human rights, making people kneel down, go and do the job. You know, go to HMP, private sector, get a job as a prison officer. When you've been there a while, or straight away now, apply to go into segregation, go and do that job. Yeah? It's fine being critical when you're out there, you know, eating your custard creams. I always bring that up, don't I? Eating your custard creams, drinking your pots of tea, discussing prison, human rights, and how officers treat people like scum. I've already told you, this lad has seriously assaulted two people. One on camera, and the other one he told me about, and I, I had no reason to disbelieve him. So I'm on with a lad and a lass who start arguing with me before we serve meals. Why do you always serve the meals? I'm serving the meals. You push the trolley. 
Anyway, my mate Lowy's on. What are you arguing about? So the female officer says, so he says, I'm not bothered who does what. Can you serve the meals? We need to get the roll in. That means once everyone is fed, you count the prisoners, you put it into the control room. Once everyone's locked down, staff can go off shift, whatever. It's a roll check. So, I end up pushing the trolley. The male officer is opening the door. The feel female, sorry, female, female, lady, woman officer, whatever you want to call her. He's serving meals. So he goes to Macca's cell. You know, gobshite here. You need to be careful with him. And, you know that and? That and, that signal, that's telling me, shut up, we know what we're doing. Okay. Macca's at the back of the cell. He gets up as she's putting the meal on the floor. She looks up in startlement. Startlement? <laughs> Is that a word? Fuck. It's just one of them days, it's cold up here, you know what I mean? So I'm looking at her, I can't see him, I'm looking at her. She's like shocked, shall we say. The other officer is pointing at him, you know. He's telling Macca, stop. He's giving him the hand signal. Macca holds out his hand for his hot water, yeah? We're conditioned sometimes. She gives him the hot water. He throws it in the male officer's face. She panics. He's screaming. She slams the door shut. So I'm now on a landing. I've got an officer who's had hot water thrown in his face. No prison officer. Nobody, no policeman, nobody goes to work to be assaulted. Yeah? He's got hot water in his face. Got him over to a cold tap, quick, cold water, as much as possible in his face. So, that's his third assault. Serious assault. Consequences are, he got placed on report, police charges. I can't remember whether he actually got added time police charges or whatever for that incident. A few days after, nobody is now speaking to Macca. He's on a three officer and senior officer unlock. He's not getting a lot. When I'm on shift with Lowy, I like to mention Lowy, he's still in the job. <laughs> he's a cracking lad. You know, everyone got what they're entitled to, including Macca. That might mean we needed an extra member of staff from somewhere to give him an exercise, but it got done. The other shifts, not so much. He's pretty much banged up 23, 24, 24 hours a day. So I get to talking to him through his door. Why did you do that the other day? Now the female officer who passed him his meal had been giving him an hard time. Um, once had a conversation with her. She said she hated men. So we got a female member of staff working in a male prison who hates men. It's not just me, is it, thinking perhaps you're in the wrong job. Anyway, she was giving him a hard time. And he didn't like that. So I says, okay, fair enough. You know, I saw some of that in her. She gave a lot of prisoners a hard time. Some had tech it. You know, he took it personal. So I said, why did you throw the water in the officer's face then? That officer was, as officers go, very calm, not aggressive, didn't take things personal, did a good job. He said, if I'd have thrown it in her face, obviously, you know, there's the burns or whatever. Stephen, Stephen, come on. He says, however, throwing it in his face, I'm sure she'd be more upset. She'd be more upset she'd give me the water when she shouldn't have. And one of her colleagues were injured. Come on. Come on. So, Macca, 
he eventually moved on. I was telling you it was a personality disorder. I'm going to say dangerous personality disorder because he ended up going to Franklin. Franklin is in the high security estate. It's also a long term prison, a dispersal prison. And at Franklin, they have a DP DU. Lots of different units with different names. This was Dangerous Personality Disorder Unit. That's why I'm saying what he was. I ain't made a diagnosis. I've seen his behavior and he was dangerous. And that's where he ended up. But their story doesn't end there. So that would probably be around about 2003. Stevie. So I'm then at Strange Ways one morning. I'm on the landing with my mate, Nobby Nobbler. I mentioned that guy in the book, Nobby Nobbler. I won't use his name. Very private guy, ex squaddy. Very much like me. Funny guy, very dry. I love working with him. I'm on with Nobby Nobbler. We're stood near the office. We're on the landing, but the office is behind us. There's a gate to the side, which is a sterile area. I've mentioned this before. That's an area prisoners can't go unless they get keys off you. Who comes out of a cell on the two's landing? It was around about eight or nine. I know that because it, it was one side of where the boiler was. They had a little alcove with a boiler where they could get hot water. Mac, straight up, holds his hand out, shook hands with him. Dynamic security knows me. How are you doing, Sam? I'm all right, Mac, how are you? All right. My mate, Nobby Nobbler, is giving me eye, shaking hands with prisoners. That's how it is, just the same as the hot water, you see, very similar. He held his hand out, she gave him the hot water. He offers me his hand. I took it. What are you doing on here, Mike? So it's come back strange ways for accumulated visits. I've mentioned these before. Prisoners are entitled to visits. Remand prisoners can pretty much get a visit every day. They're people who haven't been found guilty of anything. Sentenced prisoners, it's about four a month. People, he was a Manchester lad, people who live a long way away can apply to have accumulated visits which means they save the visits come back to a jail near to Manchester they might have a month of visits with a family and then they'll go back to their prison so he would go back to Franklin on the dangerous personality disorder unit he says I shouldn't be here Sam I should be down the block I says quite definitely an officer at the side, listening to the conversation, then points at him. Don't call him Sam, it's Mr. Samworth. I've already told you what Mac is like. So he looks at this officer, he looks at me. He says, I'll stab that officer. I says, Macca, how about I take you back to your cell, lock you up, get this sorted out. Okay, Mr. S. Okay, Sam. I text him back to his cell. Single cell he's in. He's only been in from the night before. I said, have you got a weapon? He says, yeah. Bladed weapon, yeah. I says, would you give me that weapon? He says, I will, Mr. Samworth. He says, will it help me get off the wing? Again, quite definitely it will. So he passed me the toothbrush with a razor blade in it. Stevie, come on. Let's go back this way, kid. I did the paperwork, spoke to the SO. Round about dinner time, when prisoners locked up just before we served meals, segregation staff come, went and had a word. He went to the block. 
to the segregation unit. As far as I go, sorry, as far as I know, he caused no problems. He had his visits and he returned to Franklin. So that's Maka. He's a dangerous personality disorder. I came across a lot of personality disorders, particularly on the healthcare at Strangeways. I hope that's come across well. Maybe a little description of the guy. He wore glasses, maybe 5'7", didn't weigh much either. Maybe 10, 11 stone, dangerous fucker. So there you go, Maka. And the dynamic security bit. I honestly believe that lad would have never harmed me. That's because dynamic security, it's about the relationship you build with prisoners. I didn't take him phones in, I didn't take him drugs in, I spoke to him properly. I've just remembered something now as well. Let's go back to Forest Bank when he's down the block. I've already told you, people aren't talking to him, people dislike him, he's assaulted a member of staff. You know, one of my buddies. I think his mother were in hospital um, poorly. So he's down the block at Forest Bank. I think it was his mum. I facilitated calls, as did Lowy. You know, we got the chaplain involved. The chaplain maintained contact between him and his mum. That's another thing. You see, he has assaulted someone, he's very dangerous. I'm going to treat him with care and caution. But I've also got a human nature, I've got a human side. Yeah? So we sorted him out with that. That's another thing, you know. We go back to Strange Way, he will remember that. He will also tell other people that. So guys, I'm enjoying the vlogging, I enjoy the whistle blowing. This lad, like I said, <coughs> thinking about him, half one, two, till they got up at six o'clock this morning. It's not something I want to think about. It wasn't unpleasant, but there you go. That's how my brain works nowadays. Thanks for coming. Parting shot for Steven. Yes, are we going now, kid? So, guys, see you later.